Humanitarian actors around the world are becoming overwhelmed by increasingly destructive, complex, and chronic disasters. Globally, more than 200 million people are affected by natural disasters every year, with those living in low-income countries being three times as much affected as those in high-income nations. Just as people are recovering from one disaster, a new one comes along, setting back humanitarian response and development gains. This setback can be avoided through humanitarian assistance and strengthening resilience. When a disaster strikes, we humanitarian actors focus on providing life-saving needs and facilitating community-led recovery. However, to break the cycle of recurrent disasters, we take a step further by strengthening the social and organizational capacities of the people affected, even at the onset of humanitarian response. We can do this by linking it to appropriate activities in different stages of the disaster continuum. Investing in actions that support communities beyond the project duration also maximizes resources allocated to humanitarian response. How is this possible? We take the story of a community affected by Typhoon Haiyan, one of the strongest storms in recent years that caused unimaginable destruction in the Philippines. Many have perished, been injured, and gone missing. Houses, livelihoods, and even infrastructure were destroyed. In the midst of devastation, the people relied on their most important capacities, solidarity and cooperation. We witnessed Bayanihan at work, a traditional practice of collective action and volunteerism. We built on the principle of Bayanihan instead of introducing a new system. While doing so, we also raised awareness about the inclusion of women, children, older persons, and people with disabilities, and ensured that they have meaningful participation. Beneficiary selection went through a collective process and was based on criteria that the community agreed upon among themselves. We also seized the opportunity to work closely with local authorities, helping them regain control and ownership as leaders. From distributing food and shelter materials, the established partnerships continued toward building back better shelters and resilient livelihoods. Trust and relationship with locals and authorities formed in the early stages of humanitarian response paved the way to a more comprehensive approach in implementing recovery and rehabilitation activities. Along with tangible inputs and cash support for shelter and livelihoods, it is important for people to understand the risks and how to address them collectively. Through trainings which combine local experiences with simple, replicable, and practical knowledge, they learned how to build back better and manage future shocks and stresses. Self-help groups made collaboration among the community members easier. What is supposed to be a difficult task, such as rebuilding a house, became easier when people began working together. Even those with functioning limitations were encouraged to participate. The group members realized that by pooling in their resources and assets, they can do more. In one community, a livelihood group bought a corn mill, an asset they can't afford individually, but now can when each member contributed a part of the cash assistance they received. Following the same system, some groups used their combined money as initial capital for income generating activities. Challenges remain but the assistance and training encouraged people to dream bigger, even advocating for improved disaster risk reduction plans and policies. Community leaders and local authorities understand disaster risks and are now proactive. They have embraced their crucial role in resilience building and are taking initiatives in disaster risk reduction actions. The Typhoon Haiyan response is a testimony that mainstreaming resilience is possible and will go a long way. There were several typhoons that followed, but communities endured and recovered. True, building resilience takes time and resources. However, the savings and benefits are worth it. 
Our experience taught us that if we treat every encounter as an opportunity to empower people, their communities will cope with disasters better. When vulnerable populations are active partners in humanitarian response, they do not only take pride and develop a stronger sense of unity, they become keepers of their lives once again.